This is the 2024 Honda HRV EXL. Do you get more than you expect? Hey everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. Carrie is behind the camera and we're here at Holmes Honda in Shreveport, Louisiana. If you want to know more about this particular model, check out the link down in the description of the video. By the way, check out the link for our t-shirts. We have several different designs that helps us out a lot down in the description of the video. And one thing that you probably won't find on your HRV, well, who knows, but it's found right here. There is an added bonus, a mosquito hawk. If you have never seen a mosquito hawk, that's what that is. Some of them get so big here in Louisiana that we can saddle them up and go for a ride among alligators and other things, right? So let's talk about what you can expect to find if this is something you want to buy. And we'll start here with our lighting. I know people like LED lighting. You do have quite a bit of that here. LED headlights. We'll also have our LED daytime running lights and the blinkers right here. Something that not only looks cool, but it helps people around you to know what you're doing. Tell me in the comments section if you know how to make that happen other than hitting the hazard lights button. And what's interesting here is you'll find a lot of people talking about one of two different vehicles that the front end favors to a degree. The Lamborghini Urus or Urus, however you say it. I'm not Italian, so I can't really use that accent and I'm not going to attempt to. Or the Porsche Macan. I think I see the Urus more so than I see the Macan, but tell me what your thoughts are. A very well-balanced look here on the front end with the grill. This upper grill, just the right size, not too big, not too small. You're gonna have your gloss black right there and a little bit of a combination here with everything here on the lower portion of the front end between gloss black and more of a flat black finish right there. All of this maybe should be flat black or matte black as some people like to call it just to avoid any kind of damage because it's not going to fingerprint up. That won't be the issue, at least I don't think so. People coming up and touching that as people often complain about in the interior. And you'll see your sensors here. Obviously that indicates you have a lot of different safety features that we'll talk about throughout the course of the video, but we have Honda sensing. What's involved there? Collision mitigation braking road departure mitigation braking, lane keeping assist, traffic jam assist, adaptive cruise control, it's all there. And you can go front wheel drive or all wheel drive. This model is all wheel drive. While we're talking about that, let's talk tire and wheel size. So we're gonna find 215 on the width, 60 series sidewall. Let me get out of the way there a little bit. Wrapped around a 17 inch wheel. Good news, there is a spare tire for this vehicle that it comes with. No tire repair kits, that's always a good news or good news and peace of mind. Now you will find manually folding side view mirrors, in case you're curious about that. Body colored mirror caps, that's platinum white. You're going to find your turn signal indicators built in and I'll let Carrie come onto this side. They're power adjustable, they're heated and if we come look right here, You'll also find an additional safety feature, which is going to be your blind spot information system. A lot of good things going on here. So far, a lot of great features. Let's talk about the remote here. The main thing a lot of people like to know about with the remote is does it have a remote start? You can see that it does. It is a proximity key and it also has, or the vehicle has the walk away feature that works with the remote. And a really nice sleek look here Finishing things off on the rear with the rear roof spoiler. You will have your exposed rear window wiper. I don't think that's a bad thing in this case. I often like to see that tucked away inside of the rear roof spoiler, but I don't think it's such a big deal here. And just so people know that you have all wheel drive, there's the logo for that in case they aren't sure. Is that an all wheel drive or a front wheel drive HRV that I'm sitting behind at the red light that won't go and I'm about to have to honk hat? Oh, sorry, I'm thinking about some of you Shreveport drivers, not people that are watching from out of town. And we'll finish things off with the LED tail lights. A really nice design back here. I'll never forget the first time I had my hands on an HRV. It was two years ago and I pulled in to buy some fireworks. I had it over the course of July 4th weekend and I couldn't believe the number of people that were saying, what is that? Well, the one thing that might've made them say, I'm wondering if that's what I should buy or not has to do with what's under the hood. Depending on who you are, it might be a good thing. Let's talk about what that is. And for those of you who do not like turbocharged engines, well, this is a good option for you. It's a two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder. Now that does make 158 horsepower. The torque numbers come in at 138. For some people, that's a really good thing. 
Some, pe some people are saying, you know what, I'd like to have a lot more horsepower. Well, I want you to see something interesting here that Carrie just pointed out. I never thought about this. There's a lot of space under here, under this hood. You might be able to shoehorn a V8 in here. Imagine that. You could have yourself a sleeper HRV. But I guarantee you one thing. It won't have the gas mileage numbers that this one gets. So let's talk about what those are right here. We'll come over here and take a look at the sticker. So we're looking at 25 city, 30 highway, 27 combined, and 3.7 gallons of gas per every 100 miles driven. If you shoehorn your V8 in there, well, that's not going to happen. You have capless fuel fill, and if you're wondering, it's a 14 gallon gas tank. When it comes to practical use, if you want to tow with your HRV, you can tow up to 1,500 pounds when properly equipped. And we're looking at 24.4 up to when maximized, as I have things set up right now, 55.1 cubic feet. And I'll let Carrie show you around in there. You can see your cargo area lighting. You can also see that right over here, you have that handy dandy 12 volt power outlet that will be useful in a multitude of situations. And if you're wondering where your spare tire is, it's going to be located underneath the floor here, right there. So I told you that was there. That's a good thing to know about. Not something you'll find in every Honda vehicle, obviously, at least not the hybrids, but this not being a hybrid, you don't have to worry about that. When it comes to what your rear seat passengers will find, two things that I know a lot of you have mentioned in previous videos, but I know you would like to see the magic folding seats or the magic seats, I should say, where the seat cushion actually folded up like this. Keep telling Honda in the comments section that you want to see that. And the one other thing I know a lot of you would like to see as well is the ability to recline the seats here, the seat backs. Now, I will say that the seat kind of has some recline built into it already. You can see where I'm leaning back right here. But when it comes to actually moving that, that's all you have right there. So, but it's nice that while it doesn't really have the ability to move it back and forth, it just sits in one position. There's enough recline built in here to kind of make up for that. And as far as the door panel there goes, which by the way, we do have a gray interior here. For those of you who are not fans of black interiors, here's a good option for you. The size of the armrest for such a small vehicle is actually pretty impressive. And Carrie says it's comfortable. Maybe we'll let him sit back here in the test drive and leave his arm there for a few hours and see if it's still comfortable. And you have a bottle holder slash door bin right there. I guess we could say it's a combination of both, but that's what you have. Also, we're going to find a rear seat pocket here. I always wonder why there's only one. Seems like you should have some consistency and maybe have one over here on the driver's side seat as well. Don't know that that's that big of a deal. And all I can really tell you about with the center console as far as the rear goes is the fact that we have a little bit of space right here. No air conditioning vents and no USB. Now in an interior of this size, I don't think that's that big of a deal, but I tell you what, Honda looks like they really spent some money on what we have right up here with these lights. Those look really high tech, really high end. Just something interesting that I know Carrie noticed when we were looking at the vehicle earlier. And for those of you who are saying, well, Tom, What's the price, especially for those of you who didn't skip around in the video and then ask me what the price is in the comments, $32,005. If you come in to Homes Honda and buy this HRV, I will give you the $5. That might help. So let's see what we have as far as the passenger side door panel goes. A little more space, a little more room with the armrest. It's going to be just as comfortable as what was in the rear. You just have a little bit more space where that's concerned, so that's a good thing. But for the people who want the largest door bins, obviously you're going to find that on the front door is not terribly unusual, especially on a vehicle of this size. And let's see here, we have a, well, <laughs> manually adjustable passenger seat, but it is heated. You will find a power driver's seat that is also heated. And I'll let Carrie hop on in here. We find a very nice, consistent look across the dashboard as far as the design goes. You almost can't tell where the air conditioning vents are, except for the adjustments right here at every vent. But you see that somewhat consistent look from one side to the other. And let Carrie show you inside of the glove box right there. I always wonder if we shouldn't come up with a new name for that, because I'm still yet to find any gloves in a glove box. That's kind of an old name, I guess, for something that 
well, isn't what it used to be. People maybe put gloves in there at one point. And we didn't see any USB ports in the back, but we actually have three here in the front. The first is going to be right here. You'll find your wireless charging pad, and Carrie will maybe, I'll let him figure out where he needs to go to show you what's there. You've got your pass-through right here with a USB port on each side, and there's our other USB port as well. We'll have our conventional style shifter here. So for those who say, you know what, Tom, I'd rather not have a push button shifter. Well, that's a good option here. Drive mode selector, and you'll have your hill start assist right there. Power parking brake and brake hold mode for those of you who, well, you want to leave that on just for convenience purposes. You come to a complete stop, the brakes don't disengage until you push the gas pedal again. It's good for stop and go traffic. Now, the center console here has a reasonable amount of space within. That's always a good thing. I'm curious to know for those of you who maybe own one of these HRVs, whether it's a 23 or a 24, do you think that the center console should sit a little bit higher so your arm could rest up there a little bit easier? And before we come over to the driver's side here, I do want to show you what else is here. We have our conventional size sunroof. It does tilt and slide open. Obviously, you have your shade right here that you can put in place if you so desire to do so. The control to manage that is going to be right here. You can also see everything else you have up there with your upper console. And we'll let you take a look on the passenger side. We'll start with the door panel over there. Probably no surprises to anybody that you have the controls that you didn't have on the passenger side. Over there on the driver's side, controls for your power adjustable heated side view mirrors. You can lock and unlock the doors and obviously control all of the windows. The typical things you expect to find. And you'll also find your traction control button over there on the left-hand side of the steering wheel area. And also a tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. That lever on the left side of the steering column will allow you to adjust that. And I'll let Carrie reach over and hit the button to start the HRV up right there. Easy to deal with in a nice convenient location. And we start things up and take a look at the digital dashboard right there. Obviously the HRV, for those who may not know, based on the same platform as is the 11th generation of the Honda Civic. But it has a nice modern look to it. You can actually go in and customize the look to a degree as far as how that looks and whatever you want to do with that. You also have your steering wheel mounted controls. So that will come in nice and handy for using your adaptive cruise control and obviously managing the dash over there. Pretty simple to deal with. And on the left hand side of the steering column, remember I showed you those blinky things out there? I'm going to kind of give you an answer, kind of a cheat sheet of sorts. If you ever have a test on what that lever is for, that's how you use those blinky things out there that I was talking about earlier. And also on the right hand side of the steering wheel or the steering column, let's get that right, that's not the steering wheel, is it? is the control for the front and rear window wipers. Pretty self-explanatory, pretty simple to use. Now, we do have our nine inch touch screen here. A lot of people say that's too small of a screen. I think for the HRV, it's not too bad. I think it fits the size of the vehicle. Tell me what your thoughts are where that is concerned. And if you need to make adjustments, pretty easy to deal with because you have the graphics that tell you what you need to know. Pretty easy to say, well, this is where I need to be. This is what I need to do. You can wirelessly pair your smartphone and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. I'm going to let Kerry put his foot on the brake and we'll put the vehicle into reverse here and show you the multi-view rear view camera. One thing I'd like to hear about as far as your feedback goes, would you like to see Honda maybe offer a new trim level for the HRV that has those same multiple cameras that we see on the Honda Pilot, on the Trail Sport, and the Elite models? Yes, the price would go up, but you never know. Some of you might say, yeah, I would like to have that. But a pretty simple vehicle to learn and use. Up here we have everything for managing your heated seats for the driver and the passenger dual zone climate control, and you can sync or unsync both sides depending on what your needs are. And I talked about driving modes earlier, so let's show what those driving modes are. And you can see what all is there. Now you might say sport is missing. Well, 
it's not actually missing it's just down here with the shifter so let me let you see what that looks like down here so you're going to have your d for drive right there behind that is the s that's how you go into sport mode and that l is low what that does for you is allow the vehicle to stay in low gear in low traction situations but at the same time it's still giving you all of the horsepower and torque from the engine while being in low gear. All right, we're out on the road for our test drive, and I know some people are going to say that 158 horsepower is underpowered, and I can understand that. It just depends on who you are and what your situation is. And there's going to be people out there that say, you know what, 158 horsepower is enough. It will get the job done for me. It just depends on who you are and what your situation is. But one thing I really like here is that you have a vehicle that is high enough off the ground and has all-wheel drive to the point that it's a really solid option if you live in an area where, you, where you're dealing with a lot of snow. And that's always beneficial. Obviously, we don't deal with much snow here in northwest Louisiana, and I'm grateful that we don't because we're sure not equipped to deal with it, especially if you don't have an all-wheel drive vehicle. But one way or another, there are some benefits there. But the horsepower situation, tell me what you think about it. Some of you probably own an HRV already. Tell me how you feel about that. Has that worked out as we watch carefully to make sure this Jeep Cherokee doesn't pull out in front of us right there? Kind of an interesting position. I don't know if you could see that or not. But anyway, always having to watch careful and drive defensively here in Northwest Louisiana. Now, the one thing that I will say here, from the driver's perspective, I'm comfortable. I could actually lower the seat a little bit and not have to concern myself with feeling cramped, and I don't feel cramped at the moment. What do you think, Carrie? How are you over there? Comfortable. Comfortable, okay. But I would prefer some more seat adjustment, though. It is what it is. And that's the situation with not having a power passenger seat, so there is a little bit of a lack of adjustability compared to what you have here, although you can raise that seat, actually. You just have to push down on the lever on the side or you can lower it by pulling up on it. So there are ways to do that, but you don't have quite as much adjustability there. But I guess you don't necessarily need it when you're not driving. And the ride quality is good. It may not be Cadillac-like or anything like that, but I think it's for what the vehicle is, being a small crossover uh, with a shorter wheelbase, I don't think it's bad. You do notice some bumps driving down the road, but it's not as jarring as it probably could be. So I, I, I give it good marks where that's concerned. A lot of that depends on what you're used to. Carrie over here was talking about how he definitely noticed a lot more of the bumps. But when you're driving around in a Mercedes-Benz S550, well, you know, it's kind of hard not to feel that way. <laughs> For those who are watching, in case you were wondering, you know, I talk about that a lot in the videos. It depends on what you're used to when you hop into a vehicle like this you might be used to something that is butter smooth. And so you have to take that into consideration. That's one reason why I like to tell people you really need to drive these vehicles for yourself. But a very nice ride quality, a comfortable interior. It's for those of you who may not have known, you don't have to go with a black interior in the HRV. And I know a lot of people say I'd like to have another option. Well, here's here's your option, especially when you live in a really warm climate or a boiling hot climate as we often have during the summer here. We know what it's like to be inside of an oven or constantly baptized by the humidity. But you really want a lighter interior in situations like that. And last but not least, I'll say this, the technology here is very easy to learn and very easy to use. But I went earlier and talked about the fact that some people say that the infotainment screen is too small. What do you think about in this particular vehicle with nine inches? Is it too small or does it need to be larger? Tell me what you think. But one way or another, the technology is easy to use and easy to learn, that's for sure. So tell me what you think. Do you get more than you expect with the 2024 Honda HRV EXL? And guess what? Our friend survived the test drive right here. He's still on here. Okay, I'm totally being facetious on that. A little trade secret for those of you who might know. No, I don't film this scene after the test drive. I film it before. So tell me what you think. I want to say a special thanks to my dragonfly friend right here for hanging out with us during the video. And a special thanks to Holmes Honda for loaning us this HRV EXL for the day. To tell you all about it, 
Thanks for taking the time to watch today, guys. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. That helps us out a lot. If you haven't subscribed just yet, please be sure to do so. That way you don't miss any future videos. And tell me what vehicles you want to see in future videos. If we can get our hands on them, we'll definitely make that happen for you. And if you'd like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I'll see you there.